Welcome to Film Forum Presents, a podcast featuring special live events recorded at our theater located at 209 West Houston Street in downtown Manhattan. In this episode, Film Forum presents filmmaker Leslie Harris, who appeared for a Q&A on January 25th, 2020, following a screening of her 1993 film, Just Another Girl on the IRT, moderated by experimental filmmaker and preservationist Ina Archer. Just Another Girl on the IRT was shown as part of our four-week 60-film repertory festival, Black Women, Trailblazing African American Actresses and Images, 1920-2001, to which ran from January 17th through February 13th. Here's Bruce Goldstein, Film Forum's Director of Repertory Programming, to introduce the episode. One of the highlights of our recent Black Women Festival was a post-film Q&A with the ebullient Leslie Harris, writer, director, and producer of Just Another Girl on the IRT, winner of a special jury prize at the Sundance Film Festival in 1993. Leslie was the first African-American woman to own her own production company and to negotiate and sell a theatrical feature to a major distributor. Just Another Girl was a critical and box office success with a wide release in 200 theaters across the U.S. and distribution in 20 countries. And yet, after more than 25 years, Leslie Harris has been unable to finance a second feature film, a sad commentary on the outdated mindset of the business. But Leslie has many projects in the works, including a sequel to Just Another Girl and the IRT Diaries chronicling her experiences as a black woman in the male-dominated indie world of the 1990s. A teacher at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts, Leslie has received an IFP Gotham Award, an AFI Filmmaker Award, a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, and a Trailblazer Award from Real Sisters of the Diaspora. Along with a proclamation from New York's Office of Public Advocate, this lively Q&A from Saturday, January 25, 2020, was moderated by artist and archivist Ina Archer of the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture and a consultant to our Black Women Festival. Please welcome our moderator, artist, archivist, Ina Archer of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and writer, producer, director, Leslie Harris. Hello. Hi, everybody. So um, I was talking to Leslie earlier today, and I was kind of, she was asking if I had looked at the film again, and I had seen some of it, but I decided that I was going to wait to have the experience that I had when I first saw it, and uh, I'm glad that I did that, but uh, it's really brought back a lot, and I know it must have for the people who have already known the film or um, are seeing it for the first time are getting that experience. But okay. we are going to, so we'll do questions, but first. Right, yeah. At first, <laughs> I wanted to t- thank you again for coming out. And I also have some memorabilia a little bit from IRT, but you have to answer a question. So. <laughs> okay, my first question is, uh, Natette, who's Chantel's friend, uh, said, to Natette, uh, said to Chantel outside of the uh, high school that Tyrone had a Jeep but Gerard said he had what? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> hope it gets back there. Yeah. Uh, another. <laughs> oh, oh, and the answer uh, is tokens. Right. And the button is like a token. The old tokens. <laughs> As you remember. Another question. Uh, the Chantel worked in what? gourmet shop <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the answer is day bars yeah. <laughs> okay um so, uh, and we'll get somebody in the back maybe this time okay um the for music uh we had a group bwp who did the song we want your money but there was a sample music from a 70s song does anybody know who that was uh, that's one of the stuff, but that's another when she was in the projects. All the way back? Pardon me? 
No, no. Ooh. It's a seventies <laughs> group. Um handsome. <laughs> because Tyrone drives up uh, money, 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 money. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you get a token. <laughs> yeah, you get a token <laughs> uh, and the, when, uh, I'm sorry, it's, uh, the OJs. <laughs> and when Chantel tells Tyrone that she is pregnant, we're under an, an iconic landmark in New York. Uh, back there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoever said that, can, uh, here's the button if you like. You okay. Come up. okay. Whoops. Are you, uh, could you yeah. hand? Um, you could hand that back. Or I guess I could get up, but then I'll never get on the know, on this I chair know, again. Yeah. I know. Here, he's so weird. And also, um, Chantel at the end of the sh film Thank goes you. to. She wants. She's going to a college. What college did we shoot? <laughs> okay great thank you so much that was fun okay so i'm going to start with a, a couple of questions and then um i think there's probably a lot of questions in the audience so um we'll go to <laughs> yeah so we'll, we'll go to that pretty quickly so um since we're looking at uh black um actresses and images um i have to ask right away about Chantel. You're working with the actress, um, Il Ilana? Il Ariane. 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 Um, so it'll be kind of an extended question, but the first right. part is, you know, f well, how did you find her, first of all? Well, you know, we shot the film in 17 days in, in around Brooklyn and Fort, Fort Greene, and um, we were, it's, it was my first film, so we were trying to raise money, and there were, you know, we put signs <laughs> for actresses. We also, I had, a, um, and there was a casting person who lived in the neighborhood, uh, Tracy Moore, and she, uh, we kind of used all our friends who were in the film business, mm -hmm. and she came and suggested Ariane, and that's how we, she came, but we. And Ariane, was she acting regularly, or uh, this what was, was her, her background? This was her first acting gig, and she's a, uh, dance she was the dancer with like uh back up a hip-hop dancer okay. kind of thing with ll cool j and mm -hmm. some other uh, i think Maya carey and so uh she had come from a dancing background but that was really good because i feel like uh in terms of acting it's also about movement mm -hmm. and how she kind of carried herself and i really thought that she, ariane your script is your script but an actor has to elevate that script and I feel like she did it with their talent with their uh, and we also did a lot of uh, rehearsals mm -hmm. uh, because we were raising money so that's a good thing <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I took a disadvantage and kind of turned it into an advantage in the sense that she really got to know the character mm -hmm. uh, we talked a lot about character you know where she you know her um, her kind of psychological, her social, or even her physicality. We talked about that and really went over that. Uh, so that was a good thing. And then she's just, she was just phenomenal. I mean, I think we had a synergy. We didn't, mm -hmm. because we had a lot of um, rehearsals, there wasn't a lot of talk on set because mm -hmm. she kind of knew it. and. I could give her a look and she knew like what to do and so it was kind of really it was really interesting and fun working with her and you know for for example the some of the things we had to obstacles we had to kind of deal with was at that time even natural hair black women with natural hair she had the Singalese twist right. that was that was something that I really wanted to do and uh but because I wanted her to be have a certain Afrocentric personality, uh, but at that time it wasn't really in vogue to do that. And even when we were doing the poster, we had like some issues, and you know, I just it was a, always you trying like marketing to, issues. You mean, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and also getting a woman on the poster, which seems 
crazy, right? But <laughs> most of the posters back then, it was like you had to have a male on the poster if it was wow. a story about <laughs> a And this was her story. So I fought for things like that. And there I went on to win an Independent Spirit Award for, I mean, not an award, but nomination mm -hmm. for, she didn't win, but for nomination for Best Actress. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so um, could you also talk a little bit about the other actresses, her friends? Um, yeah. Great. Uh, Ebony Doritos, mm -hmm. Natet, and like I said, it was the same kind of thing because we were raising money at the time we had a lot of time to talk about the character. Mm -hmm. And that was the same thing with uh, Tyrone, Kevin Thickpen, who was in it, and Gerard Washington is actually his yes. name, Gerard. <laughs> and he was, he's a comedian, so mm -hmm. that was fun to work with. I guess as a director, it's really fun to have different types of personality, like different types of techniques on set. Uh, Kevin Thickpin, who plays Tyrone, was more of a theater-trained actor. Mm -hmm. Ariane was more of organic. And uh, um, Gerard was a comedian. So, you know, it's like as a director, I kind of learned to work with each person differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that that helped a lot, too, not just doing the same thing. And then there was the friendship that yeah. Ariane and, um, you know, in the, in the film, Chantel and the Ted had that I really wanted to emphasize that they were friends and kind of supported each other. But at the same time, as we all know, friendships are very complicated. And you know, sometimes you kind of have to break away, and that was part of the script I was really focused on too. Was that uh, you, you know, with the abortion and how she got, she was really wanted to be with her friend, and that was a way to connect back with her. Uh, but that got her and Chantel into more trouble. So all that came from the script. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to ask about that because that the scene where they go and spend the money is so striking. Um, and the, the way that their, their camaraderie, when they fight, that's also really um, striking and very moving. Um, you know that to see um, to see Ebony so uh, tearful, but their scenes together when they're playing and hanging out. I was wondering, was that scripted or did oh. they? Was that you know? Did you write that language? Did they right. contribute? How how did that work? I guess that's. Uh a compliment because we went to Sundance people were like was that scripted <laughs> and actually it was I mean I worked a real a, a <laughs> long time on that <laughs> script uh, you know first of all if we have any writers here I did a lot of research so I went to the idea to me came to me because I was riding the subway and I would see young people and they would be exuberant and loud and annoying <laughs> and people would go to another car, and I was like, well, what, what would happen if we followed this young woman home to see who she was, that she wanted to be a doctor, that uh, what her parents were like, that, you know, we have these stereotypes that we, uh, for everyone, I think, and so that was like the impetus for me to do the script, uh, but, uh, and I started to, I come from an art background. So I came to New York as a uh, intern in advertising, and I worked on like Madison Avenue advertising in the creative department and then did traffic and all this stuff. And it was just getting too much for me after college. And I wanted to go to film school and I got in, but I couldn't afford it. So I had to take a full-time job and the job just became too much and I wanted to, you know, I had made films in college and I wanted to keep on making films. So I decided to quit, which was crazy. <laughs> but I had to pay the rent, so I started temping. And I told them I can do nothing but answer phones so I could write my screenplay. And, <laughs> and I wrote my screenplay like between, you know, messing up messages and <laughs> stuff. But, and then I, as I mentioned in the opening, I had another job because I wanted to get my film done and I worked at a nonprofit film organization called Film Video Arts. And in, in yeah. lieu, uh, I mean, you would get paid, but you also had access to equipment. And that's how we started shooting the film. So when I finished the screenplay, I sent it to like AFI and they gave me, you know, and we just started getting grants, you know. And so that was, that was interesting. I, I actually at the time went to a mini major and I submitted the script and they call, called me and said, oh, we have some good news and some bad news. And I said, well, what's the good news? They said, this is one of the best scripts we've read, 
the bad news is, can you make Tyrone a drug dealer? So I said, uh, <laughs> I said, no, you know, this is, it, when, I read, when I wrote the script, it was about, I wanted to show about class in, in the black community, that we do have people, um, you know, do have, um, we live in the projects, but we also are affluent, we, and there's that mixture of class. And Tyrone's just some, like, backstory. His mother is a principal. You know, I had done backstory on him. And so I wanted to show that, and that's why he had, he could afford a Jeep, not because he was a drug dealer. Did you answer like Chantel would have uh, answered? <laughs> <laughs> no effing way I'm going to do I that. But, um, I, I was thinking that this film is the first film that I can remember um, that, that that was covered the um, the growing up and the and um, you know coming of age of black girls and women, I, and I think many followed, um, you know, and I'm thinking we were showing Cheryl Dunyi's film, who was also mentoring at Film Video Arts, but her film also is, is after yours, um, and then more recently, films by Dee Rees, um, you know, Pariah, those kind of films, but were, did, were you aware that you were kind of in the forefront um, with that kind of story? I think the most important thing is that I wanted to hear women's voices. I felt that black women, especially black women, and women in general being silenced. And if you, uh, I was, I'm working on a documentary about um, make the making of Just Another Girl. And there was, on the IT, and there were, um, I could, you know, we were doing our archival footage about that era. It's very male. <laughs> it's very, uh, you know, and all the females are like, sexy and then all it's really weird when you look about it and you see now how we changed you know um how we're evolving as people which is really good at that time i wanted to hear her voice because as i mentioned in the opening the films that were out there that were more male dominated the women were always the mother the sister the girlfriend the lover and she never really had in feature films she never really had a story of her own. Mm -hmm. So that was important to me, and to also to use cinematic techniques to kind of reflect that. So I'm a big film buff, and, um, and I love foreign films, so I love like the French New Wave, and to her talking to the camera was something that I got from my love of, you know, Godard, and uh, some of the films there, Cinema Verite, and, then I also wanted to hear a female soundtrack, that there were yeah. female voices there. Uh, even with the language, I, you know, at that time, it was all about the guys calling the women bees and all this stuff. And I wanted to see the woman just take control mm -hmm. a bit. And even though, you know, Chantel's character is very, you know, complex and she's difficult and she's, I wanted that. I wanted yeah. someone who was, had that complexity. Mm -hmm. And the good thing now is like, I'm so like shocked at how many young people like the movie. I, I think it makes perfect sense. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, they but tweet out to me about mm -hmm. how it changed. I mean, that's the impetus for me too to do this documentary because I didn't think this small film had that impact. And, and I think that's something filmmakers, if you're our audience, would, I mean, we went to Cannes and we were in, Tokyo Film Festival, uh, it's a funny story when we were in Italy because in Italy, for this particular film festival, they would have a translator up in a booth. And when they had the, <laughs> <laughs> and when we, they had the, uh, and she was translating in Italian and talking, into the, and then when the birthday came, came on, she was like, and then she was like, in English, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> and so, you know, it affected her, who was a translator. So I didn't really understand what a film, how a film could affect people. And, you know, so that was interesting. I'm going to ask one more question and open up to the audience. I wanted to um, ask a little bit about the um, preservation of the film. I, and if you could talk a little bit about that, because it's, you know, it's, it's been around long enough. It certainly has that value. And um, as a media conservator, we'd like, you know, we wanted to know how the film's going to continue to be around so that these new audiences can enjoy it and take it in. Uh, well, we, um, 
I'm working with Sundance. I mean, this is the only 35 millimeter print, which is shocking to me wow, because yeah. we were in three, we were in 200 theaters, we were in 20 countries. I don't know where those prints go, <laughs> but I luckily I have a print. So uh, we're going to do a restoration with Sundance, and Will and Jada Smith Foundation is partnering with us to keep this film alive because you know I feel like uh, history is very important. Um, and you know, like this whole series about black women in cinema, uh, if we don't know our history, we can't really go forward. And I think sometimes with, especially with films from diverse backgrounds, we people of color, sometimes their films get lost, the history, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's critical for us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and you know, I'm working on, just to let you know, I've been writing scripts constantly, features. I feel that there is a real, we have to have improvement and gender parity in feature film directors and for us to tell our own stories and for also to have complex female characters. Uh, I have my film, um, I Love Cinema, which is a little autobiographical, but, um, about a woman who loves movies, this black woman, and you know, I'm still getting a little, you know, that script is out there. Uh, Royalties, Rhythm, and Blues is about black women who are in, uh, uh, in Harlem, and the history, uh, it, it's a narrative film about a woman who loves, who's a record executive. And actually, I had the film right after IRT, and that's another story where I had a, you know, people coming up, they wanted to do my next project, and it was about a woman who was a hip-hop record executive, and I w we couldn't get the funding for it. Yeah. Um, you know, with royalties, rhythm, and blues, it, this film, uh, I had spoken with Ruby D, and she wanted to be in it. We couldn't get the funding, yeah. you know, and she's passed away now. So it's just, um, I, f I have projects out here, we were doing Bessie Coleman, who was, a, we were, uh, Bruce had mentioned, uh, who was the woman aviator who received her international pilot's license two years before Amelia Earhart. Uh, we went to pitch it, <laughs> and some of the executives said her story wasn't important enough. So, you know, people ask what happens during all this time. Um, it's been you know, I have projects out here. I love writing. I love film, and I'm not giving up. I, I just love movies, and I grew up loving movies. My, um, my brothers, my older brothers, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and my brothers um, were just like these crazy eclectic <laughs> older guys who love movies. So I was watching, like, they had VHS of Kurosawa and Fellini and Usman Simbe and all these films, and that's how I kind of grew up, and my mother loved Dorothy Dandridge and mm -hmm. Joan Crawford and Freddie Washington and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know a lot of the uh, Hattie McDaniel so I had that side of it so filmmaking is like really in my DNA so to speak mm -hmm. and so I just love it and you know even with the obstacles I'm still gonna I'm going ahead and keep on writing I actually um, when I was doing my film uh, Nora Ephron was kind of a mentor of mine, and mm. she kept on telling me at that time, and she would, would never hardly any women directors, and just keep on writing and keep on having screenplays. But at the same time, you know, um, I see the guys move on when I was with Miramax. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I won the special jury prize, Brian Singer won for public access. Oh. Now, not a lot of people know public access. But he went on to make franchise movies. So, you know, there's a, still a lot of work to be done. Well, we're all going to let them know, you know, we'll, we'll be looking for you and demanding your work. <laughs> so um, so let's open it up. To, oh, we can, no? <laughs> and not, okay. Um, I, uh, so I'm going to start here because you had a uh, couple. Maybe in the back, too. Okay. Okay. Um, Hi, Leslie. Hi, uh, how are you? I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for the movie. Um, when it first came out, so I'm probably a few years younger than um, when it came out than Chantel was. So I, I remember, um, while I'm not from New York, my family was from Brooklyn, so I was always in Brooklyn at that time. You, 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 you told a very telling story of the 90s of black women or black young girls at that time period and um, 
teenage pregnancy, which was a, a big thing back then. Um, but my question for you is, um, and you mentioned why you had started to uh, create the script, but I always wondered in the back of my head, was there a little bit of Brenda, Brenda's Got a Baby from uh, Tupac because it was so similar when I would watch mm -hmm. Just Another Girl on the IRT and then I sometimes would see the video and, and it was so, it was the time period was, was that very close. So I was wondering if you ever had that in the back of your head. Uh, not really, and I'm not familiar with that, but I'm going to watch the video. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling me that. Sure. You know, just to kind of go dovetail on that a little bit is that uh, I did research at Planned Parenthood and Brooklyn Teen Pregnancy Center, so the park bench scene were real, you know, um, statements that I heard <laughs> and misconceptions. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, and I work with Brooklyn Teen Pregnancy Center and Planned Parenthood to try to get the authentic authenticity and that it wasn't just from the women's point of view but it's also from the male's point of view. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you actually make the movie in the 90s? Yes. Yeah. Yes. In yeah we right. shot it in 92. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like? There's oh, one sure. right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Um, uh, I want to say that this movie was uh, really, was really good. And I'm glad that my mother brought me. Oh, thank and you. And thank you for coming. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, okay. And one more question? <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. she's not finished. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when, I, when I saw this film, I'm like, um, I'm only seven. And um, I don't really think I should see this movie, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> it is rated R, but anyway. <laughs> but my mother bought me because we spend a lot of quality time together and I just love my mom really much. So oh, mom. that's nice. <laughs> thank you, Paisley. Um, again, I just thank wanted you, to Paisley. say uh, thank you again for making this movie. When this movie came out, I'm from the suburbs in New Jersey. So when this movie came out, I was it's 92. Let's see. So I was like yeah. 11 or 12 mm -hmm. when the movie came out and my sister and I were so happy and so excited to see kind of like a real view. Because mm -hmm. where we're from, I mean, it's not really gritty and it's not really, we're just like, oh, a little suburban. We're from Teaneck, New Jersey, if anyone's in there. <laughs> so, you know, it was just a good picture of what the real world was. So oh. just, again, thank you. Thank you. I didn't really have a question. Um, where Are you on uh, Instagram? That's my I'm question. I'm on Twitter, and I am on Instagram, but not that much. So I have to get my Instagram but, So you're going. mostly on Twitter. That's yeah. where we can find and like look out for your work. Yes, yes. Okay. LES24FPS is my handle, Twitter okay. handle. And I wanted to say, too, that when we did IRT, when it came, first came out, parents would have IRT parties for like their 11, 12 year olds because they didn't want it's them like getting a pregnant. Lesson. <laughs> and listen, even though she's seven, I just said yeah. the same thing to her. She's like, oh, mommy, I learned a lesson. Like, yes, yes, she, yes, she did learn a lesson. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. Okay, so one more question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Just a comment. What, um, what fascinated me about this movie is like how <coughs> Like realistic it was, like real life. It wasn't like a movie. It was like it was really mm. happening. And then my questions are: number one, where did this movie play when it came out in 1992? Did it, what what theaters did it play at Manhattan? It was in Times Square and Criterion. And the Criterion AMC, I thought, AMC, yeah. where it was the Criterion, and we were on like 86th Street. We were in Brooklyn <coughs> Heights. Uh, I, you know, we were pretty much all around, yeah. okay, and, and it got released nationwide. I remember it coming out. And, and mm -hmm. And then uh, is it going to be, uh, do you have enough movies for a Leslie Harris Film Festival? Yeah. <laughs> not really, not yet. And that's what we need to work on. <laughs> and if financiers are out there, I think that we just need to finance more movies about, you know, stories. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, I really Leslie. appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Film Forum Presents. If you like what you just heard, please be sure to subscribe to get future episodes and rate and review so that more movie lovers can find us. Film Forum is an independent nonprofit cinema and our doors have been kept open for nearly 50 years thanks to the invaluable support of our members and donors. Please visit www.filmforum.org for details on membership as well as information and showtimes for our current programming. See you at the movies.